Trailblazing journalist Barbara Walters has died at 93. Barbara Walters, one of the most famous American broadcast journalists, has died at the age of 93 on Friday evening, according to ABC News, her former employer. A cause of death was not provided immediately. Though a celebrity, as much as anyone she covered, Walters pursued serious subjects as well. She was an unexpected pathbreaker, and if you remember Walters as a journalist who blurred the lines between news and entertainment, there's some truth to that. She easily delivered lines like these to introduce Hollywood's it couple for her special, The 10 Most Fascinating People of 2006, saying, Those lips, those eyes, that body. When Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie met on the set of Mr. and Mrs. Smith, it set off Hollywood's hottest romance. Whether she was interviewing celebrities or the first couple, her questions were often direct. And at Thanksgiving special with President Barack Obama and the First Lady Michelle Obama, Walters asked the First Lady, You love him very much, don't you? To which Miss Obama replied, I do. And the President quipped, She's a little biased. Yet over the decades, Walters posed plenty of tougher questions. She had the only joint interview of Egyptian President Anwar Sadat and Israeli Prime Minister Menachem began amid their peace talks in 1977. In 1999, she scored the first big interview with Monica Lewinsky. In December 2011, she asked Syria's President Bashar al-Assad about brutal reprisals against protesters. You've seen, I'm certain, the pictures of Egypt from the President Mubarak in jail. Pictures in Libya of Muammar Gaddafi killed, Walter said during the interview. Are you afraid that you might be next? No, I'm afraid that the people won't support me. Syrian people, Assad responded. The interview was the first Assad gave to an American journalist since the uprising began in his country. It was not the first time Walters had interviewed a leader like Assad. She also spoke with Saddam Hussein and Muammar Gaddafi. Barbara Walters was born on September 25, 1929, just a month before the Wall Street crash that kicked off the Great Depression. She later said that throughout her life, she was driven by her fear of financial collapse. Walter's parents held her out of many social settings to stay with her older sister, Jackie, who had a mental disability. Walter said she learned patience and empathy from Jackie, traits that proved handy. Walter's father ran nightclubs and was often absent, as she told NPR Steve Inskeep in 2008. You know, there was such a dichotomy because, at one hand, here was this glamorous life of nightclubs and gorgeous showgirls and big stars, Frank Sinatra and Milton Burley, and I'm sure it's a life that people would look at and envy and think, oh, isn't that terrific? I didn't want that. Walter said, I wanted a normal life. I wanted a daddy who was home. Her father's livelihood eroded as television ascended, but after graduating from Sarah Lawrence College, Walters joined TV as a writer and producer. At NBC's Today Show, she contributed occasional on-air features as well, then developed into a hit as she expanded her role there. In 1974, she became the show's first female co-host. Her friend Andrea Mitchell of NBC News says she was inspired as a teen by seeing a woman alongside the men of the Today Show. She always had to wait to ask the fourth question because the men in charge wouldn't let her ask first, but she just pushed ahead and she always asked the smartest questions, Mitchell said. In 1976, Walters left for ABC to become the first female evening news anchor and was spoofed by the late Gilda Radner on Saturday Night Live. That impression was the price of success. She was the first million dollars a year network anchor. Her ABC co-anchor, Harry Reasoner, could not have been less gracious. First of all, I don't think he wanted anyone to be an anchor with him. He wanted all to himself, David Weston said, who later became Walter's boss as ABC News' president. I think the idea of a woman, and particularly a woman who'd already done not only news but fashion and also so-called back then women's issues, I think he found deeply offensive to him. The pairing with Reasoner was quickly cancelled but Walters fought her way back, moderating two presidential debates. Yet she also displayed her instinct for show business, interviewing celebrities as well as world leaders and eventually devising an annual Oscar interview program, specials on the year's most fascinating people and the daytime chat fest, The View. She loved not only making serious news, but she loved the lighter side. 
They reflected her interest and appetites, Weston said. She also stood in for a lot of the audience and knew that people were interested in these things and she never felt that she should look down on them for that. Walter's private life also revolved around celebrity. She was married four times to three men, had a rocky five-year affair with then Senator Edward Brooke of Massachusetts and dated other prominent figures, but none of the relationships stuck. Walters focused on her career, a foot in entertainment and the other in news, and faced criticism for her style, unfounded she felt. After being widely mocked for asking actress Katherine Hepburn what kind of tree she would want to be, Walters defended herself by noting it was Hepburn who made the comparison. Walters simply asked, what kind of tree? And Walters' competitiveness could not be underestimated. NBC's Andrea Mitchell was in Havana for a planned interview with Fidel Castro, and network Jet was on the way with a full crew. When the Cubans canceled it because Walters had decided she would have one and insisted hers be exclusive, Walters' fame was that powerful. It was humiliating in the extreme, but this was just the course of doing business with Barbara, Mitchell said. They remain friends. Over more than half a century, this driven celebrity journalist not only staved off financial disaster, but built one of the most remarkable careers in TV news. Barbara Walters is survived by her daughter Jackie, named for her older sister. Interviews Walters was best known for personality journalism and her scoop interviews. In November 1977, she landed a joint interview with Egypt's president Anwar al-Sadat and Israeli's prime minister Manachem Begain. According to the New York Times, when she went mano a mano with Walter Cronkite to interview both world leaders, at the end of Cronkite's interview, he's heard saying, did Barbara get anything I didn't get? Her interviews with world leaders from all walks of life are a chronicle of the latter part of the 20th century. They include the Shah of Iran, Mohammad Raza Pahlavi and his wife, the Empress Farah Pahlavi, Russia's Boris Yeltsin, and Vladimir Putin, China's Jiang Zemin, and UK's Margaret Thatcher, Cuba's Fidel Castro, as well as India's Indira Gandhi, Czechoslovakia's Václav Havel, Libya's Muammar al-Gaddafi, King Hussein of Jordan, King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia, and Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez, among many others. Other interviews with influential people include pop icon Michael Jackson, actress Katherine Hepburn, Vogue editor Anna Wintour, and in 1980, Sir Lawrence Olivier. Walters considered Robert Smithdis a deafblind man who spent his life improving the lives of other individuals who are deafblind as her most inspirational interview. Walters was widely lampooned for asking actress Katherine Hepburn, if you were a tree, what kind would you be? On the last 2020 television episode in which she appears, Walters showed a video of the Hepburn interview showing the actress saying that she felt like a strong tree in her old age. Walters followed up with the question, what kind of a tree? And Hepburn responded, an oak, because they don't get Dutch elm disease. According to Walters, for years, Hepburn refused her request for an interview. When Hepburn finally agreed to one, she said she wanted to meet Walters first. Walters walked in all smiles and ready to please while Hepburn was at the top of the stairs and barked, You're late. Have you brought me chocolates? Walters hadn't but said she never showed up without them from then on. They had several other meetings later, mostly in Hepburn's living room where she would give Walters her opinions. These included that careers and marriage did not mix as well as her feelings that children and careers were out of the question as a combination. Walters said Hepburn's opinions stuck with her so much she could repeat them almost verbatim from that point onward. Trailblazing journalist Barbara Walters, last words before she died. So on this day of reflection, I say again, thank you for going on this journey with me. Have I played the part well?